from turnstile to turnstile. Let's talk theme parks. Welcome to Park Hopper Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. My name is Dominic Ethko. We are here with Peter, the one and only Brookhart. Peter, how's it going today, homeboy? It's going very well. I'm nervous for this podcast, but excited at the same time. But before, let's do our shameless plugs. Yes. So you can go ahead and follow Peter and Sarah on their journey at the Brookhart Project on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. You can follow myself. And my girlfriend Victoria on Instagram at Dominic Eats Detroit to follow our foodie adventures, and you can follow us on YouTube at Dom and Vic. Uh, so please go and check both of us out on those um, platforms. I also want to make an announcement that you can go and email us at parkhopperpodcast at gmail dot com to send us your theme park testimonials those are some experiences that you have had at other theme parks around the world um, that you want us to share on air so please send us those at like i said park upper podcast at gmail.com and peter i will send it off to you for the last thing and then don't forget to we have this cool thing called the patreon so at patreon.com backslash park hopper podcast you can become one of our exclusive supporters on patreon and then as a thank you for that, you get exclusive access to special uh, content, uh, extra videos, YouTube videos, a small podcast, things like our I4 Rambles or uh, Roundhouse Ride Throughs, where we do special commentaries on attractions in the theme park world. I know I'm very excited that if you're listening to us now and you become a, patr- a patron, you have access to two of our I4 Rambles, one being a discussion about whether or not you should become a DVC member. And then another one that's going to be pretty awesome, it's about one of the most important attractions in all of Walt Disney World in its entire history, being the Carousel of Progress. So if you want to learn more about that, become one of our patrons, and you can hear that little ramble by myself as a patron. Awesome. So let's get started. So for this episode, we are going to compare and contrast the east coast and the west coast you heard that correctly that is walt disney world and the disneyland resort Uh, this is something that a lot of people debate on an everyday basis and who is right who is wrong we will never know but we will give you our opinions here today right this second so peter let's get it rolling i'm gonna i'm gonna start it off with a very easy one they have a little thing called under the sea Little Mermaid attraction. (laughs) That's what it's called. Great. (laughs) And I'm starting off with that one because it's nice and easy. It's a get it a jail free card for myself because they're the exact same ride, exact same track in both parks. But I will say, I know I have clear bias, but I'm going to say it's better in Walt Disney World East Coast because of the location. It's themed is is I think it's just more fitting for it to be in New Fantasyland with Eric's Castle above it. It fits better than being right next to Paradise Pier, now soon to be called Pixar Pier. Correct. Well, that was a a good way to start the show with an easy (laughs) one like that. Uh, So we should start with rides then. So I'll keep um, going with the rides, and I'll stay in DCA. And I'll talk about something that's been kind of controversial um, this past summer. It's something that I have not written on at California Adventure. But we're going to talk about uh, Hollywood Tower Hotel over in Hollywood Studios. And then you got the Gardens of the Galaxy uh, ride over at uh, Disney's California Adventure that used to be formerly known as the Hollywood Tower of Terror. But now it is no longer that. I can't personally give my opinion because I've never been on the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. I hear it's actually very, very good, and people seem to absolutely love it out there. But I'm going to give my straight-up honest opinion. They better not even think twice about doing that at Hollywood Studios. I 100% agree, and here's what I'll say. I also have not been on the new overlay of Guardians of the Galaxy, but here's what I'll say. Internet's a mean place. When they announced this, there was a lot of hate out in the world about it a lot 
we're talking Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'm pretty sure I saw a petition or two out there about stopping this. Once it opened up, it all went away. So that leads me to think that there's a general consensus that it's pretty good. My personal belief, because I haven't been on there, is I'm predisposed to not liking it. And that's not because I'm an East Coaster. It's because I've got a very close friend whose father works in Imagineering who had very close connections to Tower Terror and was not thrilled to see one of his, uh, almost, you know, maybe call it one of his babies be taken away and turned into something that wasn't what it was built to be. Well, I will say this. I have heard good things about it. I have been on the Tower of Terror when it was at California Adventure, and I'll say my opinion on that. The ride, for the most part, very much was the same. I think there was a little bit uh, of a few differences on it. The um, outside of it, the landscaping of the ride, the arch- architecture of the ride was definitely very much different than the one at Hollywood Studios, and I would still say that I like the one at Hollywood Studios better. And um, part of that reasoning being is the uh, Tower of Terror movie. Uh, they actually filmed part of that movie at Hollywood Studios, and that is the actual building that is used in that movie, not the one at California Adventure. Now, I'll let you go first, but I'm going to choose the attraction because sure. this is going to be a good one, I think. Uh, let's talk about Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. Perfect. Well, you, you dive in because I've got some facts that I want to spit out there that are not just my opinion, but that are kind of more facts. So, you so, go first. so going to Disneyland, this was the one attraction that I truly wanted to ride just due to the fact that all I heard before going to Disneyland was the Pirates of the Caribbean at um, Disneyland is just so much better than the one at Magic Kingdom. I mean, everyone would just say that nonstop. I never heard one person say the opposite. And I will say, for the most part, it's the same exact ride. The only difference is, is in the beginning, um, you you kind of go through the Blue Bayou um, restaurant, kind of like how you do at the, you the uh, Mexico. Yeah, like here in Mexico. The Grand but, Fiesta Tour. Right. And then they said they have two drops, and the one drop is barely even a drop that they, they save the two drops. And the first half of the ride is basically not even, you don't even have any animatronics. You're just basically riding through caves, you know. So it's not even, it's, yes, is it longer, but the actual ride itself with the animatronics, that is all the same. All the other stuff is just kind of extra, in my opinion, not necessary. Do I think it? it's nice to have? Yes, if you want to say it's a better attraction because of that. Sure, I can agree with that. But the ride itself, for the most part, is the same exact story and ride. No. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say Disney World's is better. Um, but here's why. And it's, it's to me, it has all to do with the, th- with the storytelling. And now this is going to be a constant theme when it comes to my, my comparison of the two parks is California's got a way different climate than Florida and way different crowd sizes. So one of the things about Disney World is a lot of the queues are covered. They're inside. They're longer. Disneyland's queues are almost all outside of the building. So to me, it was very strange to walk up to Pirates of the Caribbean in Cal- in Disneyland, walk up, and once I, the line was out, out of the building, which I was like, whoa, this is really long because yeah. I'm used to Disney World, get through the queue, which is just around like a fountain and a little courtyard. You walk inside the building, and almost immediately after you walk into the building, the boats are right there to load. Yeah. So it was like you go from outside to on the ride, which was very strange to me uh, with most of my theme park experience being Disney World, where you walk through this entire fortress that set the stage, the story to, that transitioned you from the hot Florida environment to being in the Caribbean, to being in this night scene of you loading on this ominous pirate boat and then venturing through the Caribbean, through the scenes of the pirates. So to me, um, I know they're very similar. I like Disneyland. I like how it has a real skull above in the bedroom scene. There's a skull on the headboard that is a real human skull. And you can really tell when you look at the color of that skull compared to the other skulls. They All the skeletons, when Disneyland first opened up, those were all real bones uh, for obvious reasons that got swapped out. But there's one real bone left, and that's in Disneyland on the headboard. Oh, but that's really disturbing. I know. a lot. Of, that's why it's most of them were taken out. But... I go to uh, uh, East Coast Disney World for this one. Now, let me ask you something, Peter, because kind of what I mentioned was everyone said, well, you know, it's longer in Disneyland. It has the two drops. And I kind of gave my reasonings to why 
you know, that's not that big of a deal, what would you kind of say, kind of touch on that? I think the two drops is a cop out. I don't think they're as big, like you said, that one is kind of small. And to me, to me, as I'm a very analytical person and and take things very straightforward, and because I do my, my a lot of research on Disney stuff, I understand why there's two drops. They built the entire building for Disneyland because it's supposed to be a wax museum. Right. Then Walt realized that water rides are awesome, audio animatronics are awesome. So then they had to build more. They had to build more into this building to make it longer to be more of a water ride. So because of that, that's why there's a second drop because you're essentially dropping from one building to the new building that they built or the extended building. So to me, cool, you've got two drops. Or to you, cool, you've got two drops. To me, you guys messed up. Like Walt messed up and had to add more. So to me, that second drop, when I literally I've only been on the ride once, but when I went on that second drop, the whole time I'm thinking this is here because they didn't like their original idea. Right. Which, you know, you know, obviously I can see getting flack for that, but that that's just what it reminds me of because I, I okay. do a lot of that history research. That second drop isn't exciting to me. It's they didn't like their first draft. Right. Well, thank you. So on to the next one, I'll go ahead and take um, the ride and then you can kind of comment on it, is I want to compare the uh, Indiana Jones ride and at Disneyland Resort and uh, Dinosaur over at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Okay. You want me to compare them? I want you to go first, yeah. Well, we can kind of talk together. I... Because every... Well, for those of you who don't know, these are essentially the same exact ride. I believe the tracks are the exact same layout. And the ride mechanisms, like the vehicles... The the vehicles and everything is exactly... They look a little different, but they're the exact same. I go, you know what, I don't know if you'll be surprised by this, and when Sarah listens to this, she may be surprised. I'm going to go Indiana Jones, because Dinosaur is amazing, and I love it. It's so um, sensory overload and overwhelming to me. I would never go on vacation to Disney World and not go on this, but I, like I said, it's the same thing about Pirates. The reason why I like Disney World is the story behind it. I liked uh, Indiana Jones, because we don't have that in Disney World. We have the, the, the show, but that's more about the production not the story of Indiana Jones. I liked it. I liked Indiana Jones. I liked um, it was. It's interesting to go on that that and to be in that Jeep and the excitement of it and the jerkiness of it. It's very. It's per, the perfect ride mechanism for what kind of story is being told in the in the universe of Indiana Jones. Right, and I would say for my standpoint, I love Dinosaur. I think it's one of the more underrated rides in Disney, and I would say it's never a long wait either, ever. And Indiana Jones, mind you, I've only been on it once, but the only reason I would give the nod to it, it's not necessarily because I think it's a better ride, it's just due to the fact that Dinosaur is very enclosed, right? You got the trees everywhere, the dinosaur, so it seems like you're in a very tight space, whereas even though it's the same layout, Indiana Jones makes you feel you're in, like you're in a much larger space than you actually are in. It just seems very open, and I think that has a lot to do with, you know, Imagineering and their theming. Um, but something about that I just really do enjoy. And it's always a long wait at Disneyland, and I understand why. All right, I like that, I like that. Let's go, let's go, this is not a good one, I think. Let's go to Space Mountain. Okay. I'm going to throw that to you. Did you okay. get to go on Space Mountain when you went? I did, I did. And okay. this is okay. another ride that everyone will say... Disneyland, Disneyland, Disneyland. And when I got off that ride at Disneyland, I said to myself, why does anybody think that this ride is better than the one at the Magic Kingdom in Disney World? Because I think it is, I don't even think like Pirates of the Caribbean, I could see where the argument is. I don't see it with Space Mountain. I th- I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one thing. They say that because of it's got very similar ride mechanisms to Rock and Roller Coaster with the speakers behind your head. I don't, I don't care about that. I care about the ride, you know. And they say, well, it's a double seater, which okay, you might be able to sit people quicker and get people on the ride faster. Uh, it's smoother. Well, actually, that's what I don't like about it. Is I like the fact that the one at the Magic Kingdom is old and um, uh, rough, and it's just. It's, that's part of the excitement of the ride. It's like, I don't know if my head's going to get knocked off from one of these bars or this is going to fall off the track because it's just such a rough 
great ride. I think it's one of the best rides in Disney, in Disney World, just because of that. It's just like an exciting, thrilling ride. You feel like you're going way faster than you actually are. The one at um, Disneyland just felt like it was it was very smooth, but just felt like it was going in circles the whole time. It didn't seem like it had much to the track layout, and I just I, I don't even think there's a comparison to the one in Magic Kingdom. I 100% agree. The only thing I'd say differently is that I do really like, I don't like the dual seats. I like the single seats in Florida, but I do wish we had those speakers behind you because of the whole like story theming and everything. Yeah. But, but I 100% agree with you. It's too smooth. It's not the same. I think my fingers are going to fall off. I don't know where we're going to go next. Anybody who watches any of my content knows that Space Mountain is my favorite ride in all of Disney theme parks is my favorite ride in any theme park is space mountain in the magic kingdom so that to me it was uh, very biased but I, I i thought the same thing i want to say it was the very first ride in disneyland i had ever been on i think it was like we got in the park did main street did the castle and then went to tomorrowland and went on either space mountain or the nemo ride in disneyland it was the first one ever when we went out there and i thought the same thing i got out and i was like i don't like the queue like I said, I know it's a hard, it's a bias. A lot of the queues outdoor as well. A lot of the queues outdoor, and I don't, I don't like that. I like in Disney World how you get to feel like you're going towards space, but that's almost every queue I, I can say that, so I, I need to not say that because it's going to sound like a broken record, but that's almost every ride in Disneyland. Um, but the smoothness, I like the herky-jerky of Disney, Disney World. Um, it's just my favorite. I agree. I I really don't see a comparison. Like the only the one space mountain I would like to go on is the one in Paris. Uh, cause that one I, I think is legit like rock and roller coaster. Um, so I would like to check that one out. But even then, it's that's not space. That's not what space mountain is. Space mountain's not the rock and roller coaster. It's not supposed to be like the rock and roller coaster. Now, just because I was so one way, we're gonna go the other way now. What about Big Thunder Mountain? I can't, I can't compare contrast just because I did not go on Big Thunder Mountain in Disneyland. All right, let me tell you. Probably the my biggest upset. I think Big Thunder Mountain Railroad in Disneyland. I I don't understand why people rave as much about Pirates and rave as much about Space Mountain and rave as much about any other ride in in the West Coast being better than the East Coast. I never hear people say about how much better Big Thunder Mountain is in Disneyland, but it is. If we could demolish tomorrow Disney Worlds, and you told me in a year and a half, two years from now, you could go on Big Thunder again, and it would be California's in Florida, I'd, I'd sign that. I'd sign on. Do it. I think it is so much better. It is a smoother ride, and and... It needs to be for what kind of a ride it is. I know we said that's the opposite for Space Mountain, for, but for, for what kind of a ride it is, it needs to be a little bit smoother in than Disney World. It's too herky-jerky. And then yeah. they just did a, an over, a refurb, I think, two years ago, where this part where this dynamite is going off and you're f going up this hill, and there's you can see the fuses going off. When you get to the top, it explodes as you're going down the big drop. It's that scene, you know the scene in yeah, uh, Disney World down where you go up the hill and then there's yeah. the track? And you yeah, go, imagine going up that slow hill instead of just sitting there like, hmm, I can hear the clicking. You watched fuses burning next to you go up yeah. it and right when you get to the top, it explodes. Yeah. That right there is like the details and the attention to detail that I was like, wow. And then the better, it had a better ride mechanism. It just felt like a better experience. I love it in California. Well, I can't give my opinion on the one in California, but I will be honest, and I know I say this a lot, I'll get hate for this, but Big Thunder Mountain for me is, I don't want to say it's my least favorite ride, but for like the big e-ticket attractions, it's probably one of my least favorite e-ticket attractions in all of Disney. Here, I'll, I'll burn myself to go down with you in the comment section. That's Matterhorn for me. I and, didn't like it. it and that was... Well, we can compare that too. Is that that is, I mean, kind of what people compare Everest to be, but there's no comparison. It's two completely different rides. Um, no, but yeah, I agree. But like uh, uh, Matterhorn by itself, it's a jerky ride. I think for me, Matterhorn is a ride that people just think, well, one, it's Elaine Disneyland, so it has that cool factor to it. But it's that old 
you know, original type ride that, you know, you see Walt Disney riding it, on and, and old And it videos. it revolutionized real it revolutionized roller coasters. I think it was the first yeah. steel three sided pipeline roller coaster. Yeah. So it revolutionized the industry. So there, you have to give that credit to it. It's just I don't prefer it. Yeah. After I got off of it, I had a headache because it was very jerky. I would do it again. I would do it every time I went, but it's just. I don't it was even one know of if those... I would, but that's like that's like Mission Space me because I had a headache too. Mission Space makes me feel queasy. I have, I think I've only been in Mission Space once since I moved here, and I don't know when the next time I'm gonna go on it. Yeah, and that's a that's that's probably considered an e-ticket of Epcot. Mission, not as much well, as the Mission other Space ones. is, yeah, but it's yeah, not in my opinion. Well, it is at Epcot, but it's not an e-ticket ride in my opinion. Technology-wise, yes, it is. Now let's do. Uh, I don't know if you went on this, and I, I know you have a. I don't. I know this is like a bittersweet thing for you. What about Small Worlds? Small Worlds. So uh, you're gonna kill me because I just. So let me disclose this. When I went to Disneyland, I was only fortunate enough to go for the day. So I have to go out and do a complete whole Disneyland vacation again. So I tried to go on my vacation and do as much as I could and possible both parks in one day. Small World was one ride that I figured I could probably skip out on. Just because I figured you've seen it once, you see it all. Obviously, the facade of the Small World in Disneyland, I've seen it. Uh, blows the one in Disney World uh, out of the water. It's just so much more grand and cool. You got the big clock. I know they put uh, the Christmas lights up on there uh, during uh, the winter and the Christmas season. Uh, they did a, I don't know if they still do, they did a uh, projection show out there. So yes, the facade wise, Disneyland over Disney World. The inside of the ride, I can't give you my opinion. Um, the only thing I know they do do differently is they kind of incorporate Disney characters more than they do in Disney World. So I know they do that, which is pretty cool. But I mean, you can probably explain more on that than me. Yeah, I give, I give this one to Disneyland. Uh, I really like the character incorporation. So... Each room in Small World, if anybody listening to this is actually not gone on, is a different like continent or region of the world. So you see different backgrounds and cultures. And if pretty much if there's a Disney character that fits into that region or culture, they uh, I don't know how many years ago, but it's probably many years ago now. Put um, put characters, Small World versions, like Small World doll versions of those characters in those scenes. Like you can see Lilo and Stitch in a whole in like a Hawaiian Pacific Island scene. And I, there's a bunch of characters. I know Woody and Jesse are in it too. It's just really cool that they incorporated that and brought something that's so nostalgic in Disney, but inco- uh, but brought it to a new level. And I think it really, it really, you know, emphasized that ride. So I would say that, and I do like the facade outside. Um, Disney World doesn't have much of a queue anyway, and the queue on the inside is just going around the loading dock. So I do really appreciate the outside and the detail to it. And if, it's like a it's small world that that one in Disneyland was at the World's Fair. Like that's right. That's a that you can't get much more classic than Small World in Disneyland. Right. I'm gonna throw in there now. This is gonna be not as much about the attraction, but uh, I think its queue and its its location will have more of an, a a grounding on it. But let's. What do you think about Soren? Did you get a chance? I mean, I, I could see you skipping Soren. I'll tell you this: if you did, it's the exact same projection now. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I did not go on Soren, um, but I will say. Um, they haven't transitioned to um, soaring over the world yet in California, have they? Yeah, they have. Oh, they have. Yeah. Okay, then the projection is the same exact thing, same exact ride. Uh huh. I don't know what the queue looks like. So the queue, and this is why I think I almost give it to give it to Disneyland or DCA because it's in DCA. Is you enter like an an airplane hangar. And you're walking through a hangar of airplane parts and airplane history and pictures of pilots. That kind of makes sense because you're going on a plane. But in the same right, you kind of go through like airport-esque feelings when you're in Disney Disney World. But the facade as a whole in DCA fits more of it rather than in... um, Disney World and Epcot, you just go to the land building and you're in the basement. So it's like you go in this building that's based around the land of the world. You go downstairs through a tunnel and then you're soaring around the world. 
Like, which, I mean, they make it work, but I think it makes, there's a little bit more cohesiveness to you going through an airport hangar and then going on a giant hang glider that brings you around the world. Right. Well, I'll say... I'd, I'd give that to DCA. I'll say the, the, the one in Disney World, I hate the location of it. And I think what happened was that ride was so successful out in California and they wanted to hurry up and put it here. And they're like, where can we put it? So they're like, let's just throw it in the land. I think location-wise, it could have been, if it was thought out a little bit more and wasn't necessarily rushed, it could have done a much better job with it. But the ride itself is the exact same ride. I just think it's too chaotic down in the land to have it in there. I agree, to a point. Now, I'm going to throw up there. We don't need to discuss. I mean, we don't have to compare the two, but let's discuss it because it's very interesting for both coasts. Toy Story Mania. <laughs> and you want, you want me to go into why I think it's interesting? And and, yeah. uh, and it has nothing to do with either of us going on them because I'm okay. sure you, maybe you didn't do this one. Um, but why I say it's interesting is because, to me, you asked me six months ago, I'd say Disney World because of location it's in pixar place the ride's pretty much the exact same um the queue i think is better in disney world but like i said i'm biased with that now you ask me six months from now i have a very hard choice because now toy Story mania is going to be in pixar pier so that makes sense but at the same time now in disney world Toy Story Mania is going to be in Toy Story Land. So now it's you. It's on a pier dedicated to Pixar, the company, and the whole all the stories of it. But then in Disney World, you have it in a dedicated land specifically to Toy Story. Right. So to me, I, to me, I think that kind of goes, if we go post-construction and refurb, I think it goes to Disney World. It's going to be next to a Slinky Dog ride. It's going to be next to a quick service based around the characters. You're going to walk around in life-size characters from the Toy Story world. Right. Whereas in DCA... You're going to be next to the Incredibles roller coaster with Pixar themed decorations. I think it's something we'll have to see finished to kind of give our opinions on that. But right now, yeah, that goes to Disney World. And one that I want to talk about is one that people might not think, well, that's not the same ride, but it's the same concept. And that is uh, Radiator Springs Racers and Test Track. It's tough. It's, and so I'll give my thoughts on this. Right now, I give the nod to Radiator Spring, Springs Racers because I think the scenery in that ride is absolutely beautiful. Whether you like cars or not, I think going around and seeing the waterfall, it's just a really cool thing to see. and it's, Visually, it is beautiful to see. Um, if you ask me this before they redid Test Track, I think I might have gave it to Test Track because I just love the old Test Track. The new test track, I think it was done so poorly. I like the ride, like I like being in the car and going fast and doing all that, but the theming of the ride is, I think, horrendous now. Personally. It's a, it's our, I feel like it's already aged too yeah. much, the, the new test track. Um, my inner Disney World fanboy, and, and you know, if you've been following along with our podcast, you'll know that I have a hard bias, but I, I call it, you know, I do my best to call it. And right now, I'm calling it. It's hard for me to not say Test Track because it is such a Disney World ride. Um, what I will say is the, the lead maintenance men who actually work on the cars in Test Track were sent to DCA to work on building the, the car mechanisms and the tracks in Radiator Springs. But here's what I will, tell you, will say. It's, it's kind of very easy for me to say it's Radiator Springs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just have a hard time with that because Disney World is Disney World. Epcot is Epcot. I worked, you know, 300 feet away from Test Track. But what I will say is my first experience with Radiator Springs, I've only been on it once, and it was I spent nine days on my honeymoon driving from Chicago to Santa Monica on the original Route 66. So me and Sarah spent nine days driving Route 66 the entire way, stopping as much as we could, everywhere meeting as many people as we could, seeing a lot of what Cars was based on, then ended it with going to DCA and seeing Cars Land, and then one of the first things we did was go to what went on Radiator Springs. It was like it was like an out of body experience because the beauty. Dom mentioned the beauty of the landscape and everything, and it's gorgeous whether you like Cars or not. The Imagineers got this very very close to the capturing the beauty of Route 66, the nostalgic of it, the landscape of it. And then when you hit that bank and you're outside going super fast and it's just gorgeous and the music you hear being played, 
it's just a surreal, like almost existential moment. Right. I don't care who you are, you're gonna love it. So that right. better than Test Track. I have to agree with you right now. Old Test Track, I would have to give it to Old Test Track just because of nostalgic I, factor and I just I still give it to Radio Springs. What'd you say? I still give it to uh, Radio Springs, even with really? Old Test Track. Yeah. Sarah might not agree with that because she's an old Test Track lover, but I give it to um, Radio Springs. Honorable mention in that realm is, I think, the um, the, the Tomato ride in Cars Land is going to be the exact same thing as the Toy Story one, so that'll be interesting once that's open. Correct. Yeah, the um, Alien ride. Are we missing anything nope. else? There's some. There's a, we're missing a lot that are like more classic rides that I don't recall. I, don't, I mean, I only went to Disneyland on one vacation. It was five days. With the Dumbo, I think would pretty much be the same. I might throw that to Disney World because it's just newly. Re, it's it's newer, refurbed, and there's two of them. The carousels you can. Um, I'd probably give to Disneyland just for nostalgic reasons. Buzz, I would give. We could do Buzz. I I'm gonna. I'll start off Buzz. I've never been on that bus. So I don't know. Okay, Buzz. I give it to. Disneyland because the the guns Dom you can pick up they're attached by string. Okay. So imagine going on imagine going in Disney World's in Tomorrowland, but you can, yeah. instead of being stuck where you can just go left and right and a little bit up and down, you can pick it up and move it around on a string. Okay. So th- that aspect, and I just felt like the guns were higher quality. They didn't break as much. They had a better aim on them. So I think that goes to Disneyland. So any of you Disneylanders out there, um, don't hate on me too much. I think that's, I mean, we could do Haunted Mansion. I don't recall as much so about that because I was, you know, after driving Route 66, I was pretty exhausted. I know we went on it. Um, I liked what I can remember. I did like the queue in Disneyland, especially because there, there was this creepy popcorn, uh, creepy little guy making popcorn outside of it. Right. Well, I got a good just one. Like, what's up? Is uh, Astro Orbiter. I didn't do both. I, I, I. Just the fact that the one in Disney World is higher, it's taller, it's bigger, and faster. Haunted Mansion's slightly different with the holiday overlay. Yeah, I'd have to experience that to see if that's enough for me to say that's that's going to Disneyland. I have a list in front of me. I'm look, just looking at the comparisons, and I don't think we did Tiki Room. I don't even know for certain if there's a Tiki Room in Disneyland. World. Yeah, Dom is not for nostalgia things, just like how much he loves Carousel Progress, right, Dom? Yeah. No, I love Carousel Progress. It's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. There's a lot of facetiousness in that voice right there. Ladies and gents, don't listen to him. He absolutely hates People probably ride. think I'm like this angry Disney hater, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm one of the biggest I, Disney fans in the world. On the other hand, absolutely love Carousel Progress. We also were stuck on it for about an hour or so. And I loved every minute of it. I think Riverboats, I didn't go on Disneyland's, but I think it's a cool theming, how it's like a pirate ship. I think I think that I think we gotta call it there. I, we can go into we can go into food, we can go into shops, we can go into main streets, but that's all for another vlog. Yeah. I think this was a nice little concise one about our experiences. Um, between the two, obviously Dom and I are a little biased towards Disney World. Obviously, we don't have as even if there's a bias or not, we haven't spent nearly as much time in Disneyland as Disney World. We both need to go out there and experience that, and I'm hoping both of us will get out there in the next year or two. Together, that would be the best. Yes. Um, I don't know if 2018 holds me a Disneyland trip. I got plans for trips in 2018, but I'll say that Disneyland's my default. If all else fails, all of my extravagant plans, and if you know me, I dream big all the time. If none of them come to fruition, it'll be a Disneyland trip probably in the fall. Beautiful. So Beautiful. keep that in the back of your mind, Dom. All right. So thank you again for listening um, to another episode. Like I said, my name's Dominic Keefko. This is Peter Brookhart. You can follow both of us on our social media platforms, Peter and Sarah, at The Brookhart Project on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And then you can follow me and my girlfriend, Victoria, on YouTube at Dom and Vic and on Instagram at Dom and Vic Eats Detroit. And don't forget to email us at parkhopperpodcast at gmail.com to send us your theme park testimonials on um, stories and experiences that you have had um, at previous theme parks uh, around the world, whether that be at Disney, Universal, or something uh, 
across across the world in a different country. So we'd really like to hear those stories. So thank you again for listening, and until next time, this is the Park Hopper Podcast.